everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am back with episode two of the Scrappy Strip Quilt. That's hard to say. I know, I just said it like ten times in a row and got it wrong every time. <laughs> Here's what we're doing. First of all, if you're not familiar with this series, please go get caught up with episode one. I'll put a card up here somewhere. Go watch that one first. Very quick video. It'll get you caught up. And now we are moving on. When I left you last, I was putting the top together, and this is what I have, and it's quite beautiful, and I hate to screw it up, and I have a feeling that I'm about to, but you know what? We are moving forward with the scrappy part. I want to say, if you've gone this far and you love what you have, you just keep it as is if you want, and just make yourself a typical strip quilt. This is what this is strips sewn together. It's a perfectly good quilt top, but I want to try something and we're going to go ahead and make this scrappy, make it look like patchwork, and hopefully it's going to be just as awesome. I absolutely do love this. But here's what I have to do. We're going to be sewing this into a tube, and I don't want two identical prints sewn together. When I was sewing this, I had no clue that I had two strips the same. And I ended up putting them on each end because I was like, well, I might as well just put it on each end. You know when I made my strips of two? Well, I had two strips that had that, and I said, I'll just put those on the end. But now, I need to take one off. And I'm not going to bother to seam rip it. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. I'm just going to cut, like, right beyond the stitching line going to be much quicker and easier. So let me do that and then we'll do the rest of the mess. That was quick and easy. Way quicker and easier than seam ripping that whole thing. I just trimmed it off. Perfectly fine. So this obviously goes in my pile for another strip project. So we're going to be making a tube. You've probably seen this. It's how they do the Bargello or Bargello quilts the easy way without having to cut and sew a thousand little stamp size pieces of fabric together. <laughs> so we're going to fold this over. See if we're straight. Pretty darn good. And now I'm just going to match up those two sides. And I am just going to go to the machine and sew and we're creating a tube. I'll be right back. You might be asking, why? Why are you creating a tube? It's because we're going to be cutting strips and then we're going to separate those strips in different places so that when we lay them back down together, it's going to look like scrappy patchwork. You'll understand when we do it. First, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim my edges. And I'm just doing it scissor cutting the end of my mat because that's the easiest. I think that'll get it all. Can you see me? You can. I'm just checking, make sure I got it all, and I did. I just line it up as best as I can so it looks kind of straight. And I use the edge as a guide. Good, good. Now the fun part. And when I say that, I really have no clue because I have never done this before. Never. I have never practiced it. I am just going with it. I am going to be cutting strips. I'm going to do various widths, so that's what's cool about that. Doesn't matter. So why don't we just start? You know, I don't want to put together a thousand strips, but you know, maybe, I don't know. Let's just try it. Um, maybe a little bit wider, like this. One, maybe a wider one this time, because we do have some kind of wide pieces in there, so I think that'll look good. Is that wider? Yes, it is. A little bit more. I like that. Ah, oh, I so hope I'm not screwing this all up. Let's make one not too wide. So there's three. Another kind of wide one. Another kind of narrow one. And let's see. 
Let's just cut this into two more pieces, kind of narrow, kind of wide. There you go. Now for a Bargello quilt, and you can say either Bargello or Bargello. I kind of like Bargello, I think. They keep track of their strips because you want the certain blocks to like cascade down and then back up, it, you know, to create a kind of like cascading pattern, I guess is the best way to describe it. We're just not caring about that. We're just going to do like all over scattered blocks. So that's why I don't mind that these are all mixed up. But what we're going to do is take one and we're going to decide where we want the row to start and where we want the row to end. I have no plan in particular, so I'm just going to pick this seam right here. Everyone you see on YouTube will take a seam ripper and rip that seam. I don't have time for shit like that. So what I'm doing is just laying it down and I'm going to just trim on the inside of my stitch line. All that does is it makes our strip about a half an inch shorter. But look at how quick that was. No seam ripping necessary. And we're going to open this sucker up. So we have a strip like this. Huh? Now let's take a narrower one. And I don't want it to be the exact same. Like I don't want this to end up here. So we're going to separate it in a different spot. How about we just pick here. I'm going to trim this seam off. So we have this or this. Now this way, this is too close to that. I could always use it somewhere else, but let's just turn it this way. That's pretty cool. So I like that. Now let's do another one. Let's see, where can we do it? Let's make this pink be an end. So let me find that pink. I'm going to separate it at the pink and the green. So I'm going to trim here. It's a way to alternate the blocks but yet your rows are always still the same length. Isn't it super cool? Do think it is. Let's see. Oh, see? That's pretty cool. So let's just uh, put these over. Of course I can change if I don't like the way something has come out. How about we separate here? Haven't done this yet. Oh, I just love that I'm not seam ripping like everyone else. Ooh, very nice. So let's see, I have wide, narrow, and narrower left. So let's do, I think I'm going to throw this wide one in here. Trying to get my pattern not too matchy-matchy. I'm going to separate between these two guys, I think. Let's try that. Can you imagine, like, cutting all these squares and putting them all together? This is just like so much easier. So I can go this way or this way. I kind of like this way better. Uh oh, no, we don't want that because that's too matchy matchy. Okay, that works. Although these are two, you know, very close the same width. I think I'm going to swap this one with that one. Let's turn it like this. Aha. Nope. <laughs> now I have this matchy matchy. So I'm going to have to play with puzzle pieces here for a little bit. This is all good. That's good. I think that's what we had in the first place. Okay, this one I'm not liking it either way, right? So we're going to stick a narrow in the middle. So there's got to be a way that I can do if it's going to be matchy-matchy or not. I'm trying to roll this. See, I can lay it down and roll it and see. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to separate these two. 
like that. Now can we stick this big guy in here? Oh, lovely. Okay, we have one more. I don't want to screw it up. So I'm going to see if I can figure out how to know in advance what I want. All right, that took some serious puzzle making. I think I have it. I'm trying to make it like not match as much as possible. Like, you know, this is overlapping a little bit. Hmm, do I like that? I don't. But I don't know if I have any other choices at this point. Everything I tried, it was just hard to do. I guess I shouldn't be concerned, but why does that bother me so much? I can't turn this piece because then the greens will be there. Not as easy as I thought. You know what? I'm going with it because I tried all kinds of combinations and this was about the best that I can get. So I'm okay with those touching a little bit. There's probably other things that touch too. I don't know, but we're going with it. So I'm just going to sew these back together now. I'm going to sew these two together and then I'm just going to work. I'm not doing two at a time because I don't want to get all screwed up. So I'll sew these two together. I'm going to press them, come back, add the other one. I'll keep you up to date with what's going on. I've been getting way too carried away with the puzzle making part of this. I just was like determined to try to get it where nothing touched. I have officially given up on that for real this time. I did want to mention when we have the tube and you cut the strips, if you seam rip instead of cutting off the end like I did, if you seam rip, you you have not changed the length of the strip at all, so you could sew it back together if you don't like the way it's working, and you could rip a different seam to get a different look to your strip. The way I did it, if I sew it back together, the strip is shorter because we've actually cut some of the block. The other thing you could do is, if something's not really working good, you could always cut a wider strip into smaller pieces and use one as a spacer where you might need it. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? It's all good. It's all fun. But I really love this process. I mean, look, it's going to look like we did so much work and we didn't. Okay, I'm just going back to sewing my strips. Okay, girls and my few boys, we turned a strip quilt into a scrappy patchwork quilt. And it was so quick and easy. The, the sewing part was. The deciding on the pattern was not. <laughs> I kind of stressed a little too much over that. Look at how freaking cool this is. Now, personally, I loved the strip quilt. I just thought it was stunning. I just really loved it. I happened to love the fabrics and I thought it really looked cool. But it's not my job to love quilt tops. It's my job to show you and to also learn how to do different things. And so we did something different that I have never done before. You know, you look at this and you would swear that somebody just cut all these little scraps and put them together, but they didn't. Okay, so here's the deal. I will be putting this together as a quilt. I am thinking I'm going to be like ragging the edges like I like to do, but we'll worry about that in the next video. I am going to stop this one for now. Be sure you do go watch episode number one if you haven't yet. And do subscribe so you don't miss any future quilts that I make, quilt blocks, tag-alongs, all the other stuff that I do on this channel. I'd love to have you in the peanut gallery. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!